Hi, Paul here. I'm going to look at something a little bit different today, creating a kind of 80s vibe um, using Trevor Horn's sounds from the Solar Jupiter library. It's something that uh, I don't do very much now, but but earlier on in my kind of um, working life, I did quite a lot of record production for a period of time. Um, and I've always loved making tracks. And so I thought this was a perfect opportunity to try and do one of those kind of like uh, retro, but modern sensibility kind of thing. Anyway, so it opens with a chord. And I tried to put myself in the frame of mind of um, Andy Richards, the great Andy Richards. With a chord that's kind of based in E flat, but it has every possible extension you could imagine <laughs> and a few that you wouldn't. Um, so that opens the track. And I, just to explain what that is again, it's um, you've got. So you've got one, five, nine. And then I kind of really think about that as more of a kind of A flat chord over an E flat, you know. I mean, logic describes that as A flat add 11, and that's kind of how I think about it in my head. I love these moving, moving chords that are stacked out of fifths or fourths or whatever. So this kind of... I think all of that stuff gives you a really great, uh, a great kind of 80s vibe as well, because there is that jazzy element to, to these kinds of things. And then we've got some interesting patches here for these in intro effects. You know, something that's built of lots of interesting complex sounds. And of course, this reminds me of the Grace Jones track. You get the idea. There's lots and lots of little bits and bobs that I've kind of put in here. Just a few nice effects. So let's just have a listen to this intro section, then we'll move on to the bass sounds. Right. I've got my session split into two halves. So I've got kind of all of the all of the uh, drum stuff down the bottom and all of the uh, harmonic and kind of melodic stuff at the top. So what am I doing? One of the things that I really like doing uh, when I'm building up this kind of sound is to layer things for a different effect. Each thing has its own kind of uh, thing that it brings to the party. I'm going to show you what those individual elements are right now. So up here, we've got this element. So first of all, just looking at the actual notes that I'm playing, you've got, um, I've, I've put the kind of the note below the actual bass note right at the beginning to give you a feeling of jumping off. And this kind of thing is something that I really associate all the time with, with 80s, you know, with that kind of period of experimentation. And um, people were pretty adventurous in the way that they programmed their synths or played their synths into, into tracks. This sound gives me that kind of nice uh, brunch club, it's called. Gives you that kind of nice um, squelchy kind of push through the track. And then we obviously need something to sort of carry the bottom end. And that is, that's this one. Um, and this has got a great kind of combination of um, plucked sounds. There's obviously a huge amount of bass sounds in the library that Trevor played his a various collection of basses in. So we've got a bunch of stuff and a bunch of patches that are based around that. But if you combine those three sounds together, and then you can see where I'm adding in a little bit of extra decoration, but it's not on the bass stuff. The bass stuff only does the kind of, you know, the beginning of each uh, new chord. So you can use individual components of the sound at, at different times. Um, and also I've missed out, there is this um, intro. And again, that's kind of passing through, um, if we just have a look at that. And you can see, um, it's again, it's using all of those suspensions, you know, uh, 
and coming up with something, I, you know, that's a real feature that you find in a lot of 80s music is having these um, interesting little synth decorations that have these scale type patterns in them. So that's a little fun thing as well. Anyway, that takes us through the bass parts. Okay, we've got a bunch of stuff going on here in pads. Um, so there's a couple of different things. I'll show you the various combinations I'm using. Um, but this, this pad here... The core sound is really great, but you've got lots and lots of movement in there as well. It's giving you a little bit of kind of interest. Again, very, very 80s classic thing to have that kind of super wide, lots of stuff moving around, lots of interesting ear candy going on. And the second pad that I'm using here. You know, just to give you a feel for that. That sound combined with that one. Um, then you've got a couple of things that come in here and I'll just solo these together. So only bringing these in for certain chords gives you a really lovely um, uh, decoration. It gives it, it makes, it, it, so things are constantly changing, which I think is a really, uh, really nice way to, you know, to make something just not just like it's just one sound going all the way through. That's definitely worth thinking about whether you can color in a different chord by adding in a certain sound. And with this one, you can see I've really carved out uh, the bottom and just put a little bit of, of um, top end on it as well, just to change that up. If we go back to uh, this sound, this component, and you can hear what's going on there, bags and bags of characters. So that's the sounds in there. And then we've got these um, sequency parts, I call them. So, I mean, you can see what's going in, uh, what's going on here, if I just play this on its own. So the key thing for me here on the takeaway is there's a trem, uh, tremolo plugin, which is giving me a nice bit of, uh, not too much, but a nice little bit of kind of movement in the stereo field. And then I've got, um, you know, a sort of decent amount of splosh on it. And I'm just using a basic cinematic rooms. Um, you know, it's a slightly tweaked version of the Amethyst Hall, but nothing major. Um, just to sit it back again, 80s vibe. Big, splashy, expensive reverbs all over the place, although um, expensive then, maybe not so expensive now if you're into that kind of stuff. So it's actually worth just soloing all this stuff together so you can hear how it interacts with each other. Now, what you probably wouldn't have thought is that you would put the sequency bit right in amongst the bass frequencies or the bass sound, as it were, which is occupying, like I say, the, a couple of octaves there. And the thing that the advantage that that gives me is it gives me all of my kind of pulsy action going on in one area and leaves the top end completely free at this stage for these really lovely ringing pad sounds. Um, and just kind of playing that bit again. <laughs> It's all good. Now we go into a section here with um, the bridge uh, where it all gets very, very kind of pulsy. Um, I'll just give you a quick blast and then we'll look at the individual sounds. Okay, you get the idea. So we've got a spacey pad down here, first of all, which again, it's a, a preset from Jupiter, which I've tweaked a little bit, but not very much. And it's giving you that lovely kind of, um, you know, kind of pulse wavy sort of clarity um, 
it's a it's a yeah beautiful kind of sound as a basis but in here I'm got, I've got these um, bridge chords uh, sequence pattern being played on two different sounds the first up is this one and again we're sending to a cinematic rooms just because you know I just wanted everything in this. I just wanted to go mad and make everything like larger than life as big as possible. So I've not been shy on my um, reverb choices. Uh, there's also a little bit of reverb in the patch as well. Not calibrate. <laughs> Again. It's a cool sound. Lots of cool sounds in here. And I'm just finding things that do slightly different things. So if you hear those together. You know, this is again part of the getting the punchiness through is about finding sounds that complement each other so there's not too much overlap um, and it really gives you that nice punch. Um, the bass sounds are essentially the same as before and then we've got the spacey pad thing which we listened to earlier. Now the other thing that we use here um, just for a very little bit of background colour is this, is this kind of um, motif that's growing slightly. And halfway through. You get that kind of harmony added in. Um, so that's that's a nice uh, little touch. Now, what happens next? So we go into the kind of um, the kind of chorus, as we might call it. And that sounds like this. <laughs> Okay, so there's a couple of different things happening here. Um, we've got the, the this kind of main pattern. So there's a couple of things that I'm doing here to get my 80s groove on. Um, one is just a really simple, straightforward, clear, melodic thing. Um, but the other thing is pushing everything to the offbeat. So... And that, again, really gives you that kind of throwback feel. Um, and it's really nice because you're kind of pushing everything against the beat. One of the things we'll, which we'll discuss when we come to the beat section is um, having a really, really clear, um, no kind of swung stuff. It's, I'm just going straight down the line. So anything that pushes against that um, gives you a really great kind of lift. So th this sound is made up of a couple of different things. Um, we've got a second sound here, um, which I'll play them all individually. So that one's got not, lots of nice bouncing going on. And then and then that one, we've put a bit of splosh on it as well. But it, that one again has that kind of um, complementary uh, sound to it. And then just, just at the top, we're just... We've got... A uh, nice little artifacty sort of sound that's just accenting the first note. But if we solo these all together, and what I really like about having this combination of sounds is it gives me that kind of Roland D50 sort of feel. It sounds like uh, those patches where you would just load up a, your new synth if you were lucky enough, not me, <laughs> unfortunately. If you were lucky enough to have a D50 when they came out and, you know, the first patch you loaded up, you just pushed a few chords and it's like, whoa, it sounds great. They had that great thing with the D50 where, you know, it's got it's got the that kind of crisp, punchy sound and loads and loads of effects on everything. So it's all kind of bouncing around. So that's our, our kind of... Uh, thing up there we've got this fabulous sound i've actually changed this <laughs> changed this a little bit um since i made the uh demo i've come up with a sound that i actually like a little bit better so i'm going to show you how i've built this um i've taken let's uh switch everything off all of the effects um so i've taken this basic sound which has got you know a lot of nice kind of twist in it and i've put a variety of things on it so i've started with a filter and then we've got a bit of culture vulture to give it a bit of dirt that's great isn't it want to add in the bass end just <laughs> and then just push that um there's a couple of frequencies in here listen to this so i wanted to um 
almost give it a kind of vocodery type of feel. Um, but it, but basically then it's just got a bunch of reverb on it. Yeah, really fantastic sound. So the effect of that in the track, if you listen out for that now. Again, it's not really part of the bass, but it's just, it's like a statement that just says, here I am. It's the beginning of the chorus. Um, and then we've got, you know, <laughs> the bass kind of has a variety of different sections. So sequency wise, we've got two things going on. We've got this. And again, it's a fairly straightforward synth bass thing. I've given it a real kind of push in the mid range. And again, that's really straightforward. I'm only bringing out sounds that are part of the character of the sound itself, but I'm kind of focusing it all into that sort of um, nice kind of throaty kind of area, um, just to give it as much character as possible. Um, we've got over here um, a great sound. So, sorry, <laughs> let's hear this with the uh, solo. And this is that kind of fabulous, um, I always used to make sounds like this on the Oberheim or um, anything that anything that gave you, that had those nice filters that you could work against each other um, to give that kind of slight, slight ring to it. We've got these two sequency parts uh, going in tandem, so let's play those. Now, the first thing you probably think is, oh my God, that doesn't sound very tight. 100%. <laughs> Played in and left slightly loose. Again, giving you that kind of vibe. Listen out for this sound in the track. And it doesn't sound, it just sounds like it's part of a kind of groove. It sounds like it's part of, um, you can't, you know, there was a whole period of, of this, music that we all love from the 80s where stuff just was played in you know and it was you think it's sequenced but um some of it is and some of it isn't and that's the beauty of having that kind of thing so at the end of the chorus we've got this like little transitiony moment where uh, i'm just using a couple of these in these effects patches i mean if i just grab that one up um and solo it so you can hear what's going on here let's just find that uh, moment there we go so again we've kind of used the same sort of vibe um, as the opening but here I've put a little bit of a kind of uh, mid side -y type widening thing on it to really pull it outwards a bit of stereo delay and lots of reverb of course that's the best way to get that 80s vibe <laughs> and then here we've got just this Fabulous effects. There's some really great effects in this that give you that, you know, that amazingly 80s vibe just straight out of the box. That's really cool. Um, and those in context. Okay, so let's have a look at what's going on here. So as you can see, we're kind of back to the beginning um, in terms of all the stuff that's going on. Uh, I don't think there's any significant changes apart from this sound here, which I'll just bring up. Now, again, I've done a little bit of EQing on this, but it's a fabulous, um, uh, it's good, well. It's got a super, super punchy lead sound. Um, I've only really given it a little bit of a juice here. I mean, if I turn that off. And as you can see, I've, I've done this on a few of these sounds, you know, nothing really, uh, well, that one's a little bit drastic. We'll come to that in a minute. But things where I'm looking at, you know, really honing in on the character of the sound. That's all it is. So I've just tried to emphasize the character of every single sound that I'm using. And this is just a normal, thing that you do when you're you know when you're doing these kind of track things i had the oxygen album when it came out and just loved those 
beautiful, punchy, clear sounds that Jean-Michel used in those productions. So um, that's my kind of little tribute to that on this on this lead sound here. Um, so that kind of goes through there and then we get into this next bridge section again. So the biggest changes you can see here is this sound, uh, interestingly titled Bloop Bloop. And uh, we've got, I'll just kind of play Now, a couple of different things I've done to this. Let me turn everything off and then you can hear what the core sound is. So it has its own little bit of delay going on in the patch. Um, but one of the things that I quite like is allowing delays not to be linked to the track. And I might even build things up with a couple of different delays um, sometimes none of which are actually linked into the into the the kind of tempo of the track so i just put that out there and also feeding the delay into the reverb so let's turn the reverb on first actually and you can hear and having those delays continuing to ping the reverb is a really useful tool um what have we got on here we've got a uh, again a kind of slight carve out I'm just taking the bit of the sound that I really, really need and emphasizing it a tiny bit and carving away a little bit of the lower, slightly muddier frequencies. Then I put it through something just to give it a bit of a twist. And I want to hear those, woo, woo, all that kind of great stuff, which again, you know, just makes me think of the 80s. Finally, I'm just pulling it all, putting it all up a bit using the LA, LA2A so that that stuff you know, doesn't just get lost in the uh, in the morass of sound that's going on. So if we just go back, so if we listen to that on its own, I'll solo it and then I'll bring the rest of the track in. So I think you can hear there, you can hear the contribution that it's adding. Um, and it's giving that really nice kind of toppy toppy stuff. Now, what else have we got down here? We've got that uh, kind of, you know, well, here. So this is giving you a little bit of that, but it's not exactly the same. And I've put it really hard over to the right hand side so that it's, it's something that definitely you only hear coming from over there. But I've put, confusingly, a stereo delay on it and using the balance panner rather than stereo pan to give you that, allow you that little range. Um, so there is stuff going on in there within that, within that band. So if I just turn that stuff off. So you can hear the sound itself has a little bit of delay and I'm putting a different delay on it as well. And again, this is that kind of building up the richness of, of sound so that there's just, you're overloaded by, or at least I am, maybe it's my uh, <laughs> small processing power of my brain, but I've, I've got lots and lots of stuff happening and that just, you know, makes me, makes me happy. Um, so that's a cool little addition. And if we actually listen to that together with Bleep Bloop, And actually, looking at this track, uh, I've put Spacey Pad, but obviously it's not Spacey Pad. Um, this, with this amalgam um, patch, is giving you a pedal. So th that's another thing that's very, very common to 80s tracks, is having a pedal. Now, often it's down the bottom, but frequently it's also at the top. So you got, everyone knows about a pedal note and you change the chords over the pedal note and it gives you a really nice kind of suspense, kind of suspended sort of feel. But you can do that and, and frequently is, is done, you know. I mean, that's that kind of thing is in a million 80s tracks um, while the chords are changing underneath. And so I've kind of nicked a little bit of that idea for this section here. Um, and then we go into the end section. Anything different there? Um, no, that's pretty much got the same elements to it. Um, so what about the beats? Okie dokie. Let us go in and have a look. Right. So I'm going for these. Uh, I categorize my drum sounds um, by the kind of 
uh, the vibe that they give me. And so I, I refer to things as like MPC 60 stuff, which was the first sequencer I ever worked on um, in my career. Interesting sequencing orchestral stuff on an MPC 60, I can tell you. Um, so I've got all these sounds and I've tried to focus in on that MPC 60 sound. So because I want that kind of feel of that punch that you used to get from the MPC 60. I mean, obviously there's a SP 1200 vibe on this one, but let's just check this out. So if I'm going to, I'm going to just solo uh, everything that's in the rhythm track and we'll just play from the beginning uh, and have a, have a listen to this. So it's very, very straight. There's a tiny kind of kickback on, on some of the higher frequency sounds. On a few of these, I've used the uh, this AMS reverb. It's, in fact, if we, if we just solo that track, you can see the effect that that's having on, on this sound alone. And that's giving you that kind of slap back. So you can see it's a kind of 110 um, kind of pre-delay. So what is actually making up the sounds here? Well, let's look at these sounds that I've got um, that are kind of, in a sense, the, the bass drum. This is the, the core one here. And then this little fella is just like an offbeat thing. And that's, that's gonna have a different kind of audio profile. It's just, it just, it's a decoration. So the core of the sound really is this uh, and this comes from the, um, the I've just used a, a, a default patch and I've just gone into the drums selection here and just picked the right, the thing that has the right sound for me. Now, what have I got on it? I've got a little bit of this um, EQ, well, actually quite a lot, but check it out without it. And again, you know, <laughs> It's incredibly easy, as long as you've got good quality sound going in, it's incredibly easy to pull the frequencies that you need out of it and just really make it pop through. Um, let's have a look at the snares. So first up, we've got this one that's got the kind of slap back on it. And then we've got this one. Wow, that's a good one, good one for punch. So let's just dive in, let's turn all the processing off. And again, I'm honing in on what I want. So because I'm only using the bass drum at the beginning of every two bars, um, I want the snare to kind of kick like a bass drum. And so this is the one that I'm using and I've got a lovely bit of that bottom end in it. And then if we have a look at this one, it's just straightforward. It's just getting a bit of length on the sound is how I kind of think about it. And um, we've got a few little decorative bits going on down here. So um, this one, you know, very straightforward. What reverb am I using? Just give that a jiggle. Oh, surprise, surprise. <laughs> oh, but it's set to something different this time. Stone Cathedral. So I've got a bit of that cinematic rooms on. If I take that off, get the idea. It's just a, it's a kind of platey sort of feel in a way. Um, and then we've got two things going on here. So let me just solo these. Okay. And these again have that kind of, um, you know, if I, if I click on that, you can see quantize is off. Um, and if I look at this one again, whoop, quantize off. So I'm looking at this stuff and I'm going in for it so that I'm getting that kind of, Slightly, um, you know, I love the um, Jam and Lewis productions. And the thing that I really loved about them was I saw an interview with them where they said that they just used to play everything into the MPC. They didn't quantize stuff. And when they played it in and it sounded great and it sounded like it had a groove, that was how it was. And I love that approach. Some of this stuff obviously is quantized, but I do like um, giving it that feel of, you know, unquantized things hanging around the groove within the quantized stuff that you absolutely have to have quantized. For example, 
um, you know, when we go back to the bass drum, <laughs> that's quantized. So there's things that I that I want to hammer as hard as possible right on the grid. Um, and then there are things that I think just kind of groove around it. So that's that's pretty much that. You've got the usual kind of percussion arrangement uh, style. So we bring in uh, at this point in the bridge uh, this kind of you know some additional pro uh, some additional sounds on the sixteenths. And what I love about that is that it's just a really it's just like a sound that is almost nothing to it. And in fact, I've stripped what little there was there out of it. So if you listen to it without any uh, processing. <laughs> kind of funny. And then if we add that stuff in, you know, I've gone in with the uh, API and then even more. And really kind of got just the bit of the sound that I want so that you haven't got anything extra kind of messing up your track. Um, what else have we got here? Uh, this kind of little thing, if I just focus on that. And you know, this is kind of, again, it's a, it's something that I've put a bit of um, processing on and then put it back. You know, I'm not doing loads to it. I'm just emphasizing the the cool stuff that's all already in there. But it's a it's that kind of tuned synclavier. Well, not really synclavier. It's the tuned. Um, I've called it synclavier or syn drum, but it's it's more like a kind of Simmons to be honest. It's that more of that kind of vibe. And then my I love a, a kind of tight tambourine vibe. And this one is great. It's just just does what it says on the tin. And when we add those two bits in, uh, let's solo all the drums. So you get the idea. It's all pretty straightforward stuff. And the thing that I learned um, from producing records, never successfully, <laughs> hasten to add, uh, had some artists signed, but um, you know, nothing ever really came out and did did fantastically even though some of those records I'm really proud of um the thing that I learned is that you just have to focus on um stuff you have to be really careful it's a kind of a constant evolution process where you're tweaking 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 and finessing over quite a period of time before you get to the thing I mean this obviously you know I only had a couple of days to put this together so this is just some this is just like slamming it all up and going for it. Whereas if this was an actual record that I was working on, you know, I would be working for weeks on this stuff and put all kinds of cool little changes in the rhythm track and, you know, all of the decoration, all of the, you know, this is more like a charcoal sketch. And then obviously you go on to produce something that's um, hopefully, you know, is has lots and lots of care and love and attention and detail into it. So I'm just going to play the whole track down. Um, and and that will be the end. Let me just check. I've got that at the beginning, right? Yeah, and that will be the end of the video. So if you if you're still here um, on this slightly different topic, uh, thank you very much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you on the next one. But here we go. Here was my demo track. Hope you enjoy it.